want to say hi to the women of the LWML. I uh, want to take this opportunity to update you at your convention on the work of the Loop Project 5-2 Clinic, which uh, you have helped make possible with your grant. All of the medical equipment on this ambulance and uh, down at the clinic have been provided by the grant that you gave us. Uh, currently, we are expanding our services beyond the uh, mobile clinic that you've seen before at the last convention. This is our mobile antenatal testing unit where we now are weekly going out and make home visits to moms that are at high risk. Uh, we're making a visit today and what's going to happen, we're going to see this patient and then we're going to flip to a video uh, that you will have been able to see uh, at the Urban Ministries Conference, but many of you weren't able to uh, participate in that. And I think that'll give you an update on what you made possible for the Luke Project. So thank you again for your gifts and we look forward to the opportunity to work with the LWML in the future. I'm gonna be like Sergeant Friday. A lot of you have hair my color, so you'll know who Sergeant Friday was, right? From Dragnet. And what did he always say? Just the the facts. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the facts on the Luke project right there, the PowerPoint presentation. You got it. So we'll just, I, uh, when I say forward, we'll just go forward to it. Uh, if you want more of the information about a bunch of the details in the business canvas and everything else about the Luke project, go to the website. The website is LukeProject52Clinic.org. There are some videos on there that you can watch. Uh, one of them is by one of our patients. It's patient oriented. Another one was produced for us uh, for presentation at Grand Rounds at uh, the DMC and at the University of Michigan. So there's a lot of information on there. I encourage you to go to the website. Everybody always asks, what's the shield mean? Very straightforward, the God of creation, that's the stars, comes to us through the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word, the Word of God, to make us fishers of men by providing compassionate care in the name of Jesus Christ. Next slide. So the whole idea of the Luke Project is to be both a great compassion ministry, if we see people in need, let's help them, but also a great commission ministry. The Luke Project is not the church. We don't pretend to be the church, even though I'm a Lutheran pastor. What we want to be is a mobile asset that can be deployed by a local church in order to connect with their community. Our why is very straightforward. It is six words. We exist to save babies, change lives, and help churches build community. Next slide. The Save Babies is very straightforward. You may or may not be aware that Detroit has the highest preterm birth rate in the nation, that we have an infant mortality rate. That is the number of children that die before their first birthday, okay? That is third world country level. The average in the United States is 5.6 babies per thousand live births don't make it to their first birthday. In Detroit, it's 13.1. It's in Saginaw, it's 15.1. In Flint, it's over 12. Those are the top three in the state. Two and a half to three times the national average babies are dying. And we say, why is that? We had two hypotheses we started with. The first one is this. I'll just ask you, how many of you here like to go to the hospital? No hands or even the doctor's office. Yeah, why is that? Because the healthcare delivery in the system in the United States is designed primarily for the comfort of the healthcare provider, not the patient. And what happens in higher poverty and up socioeconomically, uh, we'll bear the burden of the culture shift necessary, go into the culture of the provider and get the care we need. Because if we don't like the care we receive, most of us can choose to go see a different provider. Women in poverty cannot. And so they choose not to go. Number one cause of a bad birth outcome is lack of prenatal care. That's from the Governor's Task Force on Infant Mortality. It's a multifaceted problem dealing with poverty, dealing with education, but number one, lack of of prenatal care. And so we want to say, baby, second hypothesis was very simple. Why don't women in poverty go 
and get the prenatal care they need because there's plenty of health care in Detroit and every woman in the state of Michigan from proof of pregnancy is eligible for Medicaid so they got insurance right and there's all kinds of health care why we got babies dying like this second hypothesis poor people get treated poorly in the health care delivery system they don't get treated the same whether it's racial disparities whether it's uh, socioeconomic I'll leave that for, for people smarter than myself so our uh, whole relationship based model of care we're trying to contribute to the conversation on this issue uh, not only locally in Detroit but nationally I'll be presenting next uh, this coming Thursday in Lansing at the invitation of the director of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and the head of Blue Cross Blue Shield on innovations in maternal and infant health and we're trying to make a conversation that say let's change the way health care is delivered to women in poverty actually to everybody from a product uh, delivery system we have this great product health care let us deliver it to you to a relationship based model of care that says we will accept anybody regardless of their circumstances and treat them with the dignity and respect that every child of God deserves and build a relationship from a healthcare standpoint, it's because we believe that relationship will be the glue that will hold our moms in the system to get the prenatal care they need so we save babies, which is why we're here. Uh, by the way, just one stat for you, our no-show rate for our patients is 21%. The average no-show rate, according to Dr. Tedeschi, who's the CEO of the uh, DMC and his team in their urban clinics, is over 50%. Why that difference? We build a relationship first. So that's what we're trying to do. Next slide. When we say change lives, that's one of our families from the clinic, we're not fooling ourselves into think we're going to solve every problem that our moms have, although we try. Okay, Just like you guys are trying in so many areas. But what we do believe, it's, I have a house, it's on a big hill, and it's up through a tie wall, and it's very dark, and my wife made me put in solar lights. Why? They soak up sun during the day, they shed light in the darkness, because there's no, no power there. That's what the Luke Project does at Family of God through our partnership. That's what a lot of these ministries here are trying to do. We're trying to shed light in the darkness because it is amazing what a little bit of hope can do for a person to navigate the difficult lives that they're living. Next slide. So, in the whole concept of building community, what do we mean by that? There's actually two sides to it. One is, uh, from a practical health care standpoint, part of the problem that our moms have is they don't have a community support system. They don't have anybody to give them a ride when they need a ride to their appointment. They don't have anybody to watch their other family of God. One of their moms, one of our moms slipped and fell on the ice, had six kids. And one of the women from family of God stepped up and said, I'll watch your other six kids for the three days while she was in the hospital. And she had five of her own at home, you betcha. And so the mom, they don't have, many of them, a community support. What better community support system than the local church? And so our goal is to try to connect our moms with a local church. Most churches can't deploy a fully staffed mobile medical clinic. But you know what they can do? They can serve a hot meal six days a week. They, they can provide a children's ministry or a child care center so that there's somebody to watch their other kids when they come for their appointment. They, they can provide a Benjamin's closet with that. Most churches can do that. And so our promise is if there's a local church that cares enough about the babies that are dying before their first birthday, enough to staff the non-medical wraparound services that wrap around the health care delivered by the Luke Project, our goal is hopefully to every two years add a second site. We're planning on going to Flint, to the east, uh, to the east side of Flint with the Franklin Avenue Mission sometime, dependent upon development and whether I've got the money to do it, between uh, fall of next year and, and then every two years to add another site in Michigan where babies are dying. Next slide. What we offer, you can read, through. we are a full-service prenatal and infant care up to one year clinic. Uh, 
The only thing we do not provide, we don't do pregnancy options counseling, we don't do emergency contraception, and we don't do abortion services because we are pro-life through and through. Next slide. We got a lot of successes that we've had in partnerships that we've developed. We now have a signed agreement with the University of Michigan where they pay their physicians and their family practice department of medicine. Uh, actually, uh, the chair of that department is going to start serving on our board next month. Um, and, uh, and they're paying their doctors to come serve at our clinic, no charge, okay, according to our mission, vision, and core values. We've got a partnership with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in that they provided the initial $75,000 grant for startup funds, and then they gave us a $75,000 returnable mission dollar that gave us the funds to get started. We have a partnership with Concordia University Ann Arbor. We actually have one of the classes from their nursing school comes every semester to do a rotation in the area of relationship-based model of care and my wife who has 48 years of high-risk labor and delivery and neonatal uh, intensive care experience precepts one or two of their fourth year students uh, to do training for them in their externship. We developed a partnership with the Detroit Health Department so every clinic now they send a four-person team to our clinic so that our, we're making sure our because what would happen is we would have to refer babies out for their immunizations. Well, when we refer, guess what happens? Half the time they don't go, but they come back to us. So now Detroit Health Department sets up at Family of God, first and third Thursday every month, an immunization station just like you would get down at Children's Hospital. So our babies are being immunized. We have partnerships with a local doula organization for prenatal education. We have partnerships with Wellspring Lutheran Services. They actually provide one of the three organizations so that we have social services consults available on site for our moms who have food uh, housing, other type needs. We have partnerships with the DMC through their lab. We have partnerships with the Navigators who helps our mom. Why the local hospitals won't help our moms uh, get their insurance? They know they're all eligible. I have no clue. So we got this Navigator group that helps us do that. Next slide. We also have successes in outcomes. Next slide. This is through our first two years. What you will see is the preterm delivery. Detroit's number one in the nation in that area. Detroit averages 14.5. Wayne County, Michigan, United States as a whole, and the Luke Project. Even though our moms have multiple risk factors that would militate towards a higher preterm birth rate, you can see that the care they're getting as a result of what we're doing is making a difference in saving babies and that's why we're there. Next slide. Also in low birth weight, babies under 2,500 grams, they're at much higher risk for ongoing health issues as they, as they age. In Detroit it's 14.4, in Michigan it's 8.6, in the United States it's 8.2, and the Luke Project's better than them all at 6.1. Next slide. Uh, before I go into finances, I would also share that we've had some successes in baptisms as well. Family of God has participated with us. We've had a number of baptisms at Family of God. I've done baptisms of a mom and her baby at Living Water when I was doing the vacancy there. I've had the privilege of doing baptisms uh, at the uh, NICU unit at Children's Hospital. When we walked into that room, the mom, a black African-American woman, introduced my wife and her and, and my wife and myself as her family, which was one of the greatest privilege I ever received. Just a thing on finances, we've uh, been able to accumulate over $300,000 in assets since the first three years we've been in operation. We have a full-size 35-foot mobile medical clinic with two exam rooms, lab and pharmacy. The ambulance is sitting outside, donated by Huron Valley, Valley Ambulance, and we simply had to, to uh, re uh, refurbish it for the purpose of our uses. And then we got a, a donation of a 12-passenger minibus 
uh, which we now are sharing with Family of God. We're only there first and third Thursday of every month. We use it to transport patients, but Family of God is there 24-7 providing a community support system for our moms and their children. And so with Family of God uses that during the week when they, uh, when they need to make trips or whatever they want to use it for, it's theirs as well. And then our medical equipment, we have a number of uh, ultrasound units, uh, maternal fetal or uh, fetal monitors, etc. Liabilities we have outstanding. We borrowed money, $132,000 to buy that bus. We put $50,000 down and we have $77,000 outstanding. Costs us about eight. If anybody wants to retire that debt, it would give us almost $1,000 a month of more money to do ministry. And then we have returnable mission dollars that needed to be repaid to the district from our initial startup costs. A local congregation, Living Water in Whitmore Lake, actually signed that note uh, to pay those returnable mission dollars off at a low interest rate over a 20-year amortization period. And last slide. Finances in an all-volunteer organization. I would remind you, nobody in the Luke Project gets paid from myself down. The only people receiving a salary is I've had to hire recently two $15 an hour clerical people to work in the clinic offices between clinics because of the amount of works. So we've grown from having four to six uh, patients per clinic when we first started. We now have 60 plus uh, at every clinic along with the kids. And so our funding comes from individuals, organizations, and grants. Last slide. Last slide, those are the Luke stories. You wanna know ways you can help? Four things you could do. Number one need, believe it or not, is people simply willing to serve in our sibling room for four hours once a month to watch. We had 22 kids in that sibling room last clinic and one worker. And I don't think she's gonna come back. <laughs> I've been begging every place I talk, if you've got a church and you've got four people and you would say we'll serve one four-hour clinic every two months to provide a mini vacation Bible school for that uh, four-hour period of time that we're open so that we can not just do child care but teach Christ, please call me. I'll give you a business card at the back. Number two, we now have three vehicles. I'm serving as the fleet manager and I know nothing. Uh, so if you know anybody that would like to be the fleet manager of a, th of a three uh, vehicle fleet, talk to me. And three, serve on the Benjamin's Closet team. Not only uh, Karen, I know, serves on the team. Uh, the, wh the lady that was with you that provides the blankets. She's and th th this wonderful lady, they provide materials for the Luke Project, for the Benjamin's Closet. It's all things baby care. So we need workers not only in the closet, but guess what else we need? We need people who help Kim Eisworth, our team captain, because we do baby showers and first birthday parties. And that's some work as well. And then finally, uh, if you can, donate. I'm gonna put a word in right now because at the last Michigan Lutheran Leaders meeting, we were supposed to do something. Why can't we have for all of these ministries, a common development director whose job is to go and share these stories with the congregations of our district. And people can, you don't have to specify that we have to div divvy up that pie, because people can say, I want to support this, I want to support this. All it takes is all of us getting together and say, hey, what could we afford as all these organizations to fund a common development director so that we could actually fund some of these ministries in a way that we make a difference for Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>